start broadcasting. Um, okay, so I, uh, as as you two remember, we just finished uh, all of Plague of Fourth Mode, the brief versions of the the Resurrectional Vesper <coughs> service. So now, since at least the general uh, tendency in Byzantine chant, like when you're teaching it, is to kind of stick to the diatonic modes, uh, because those are the most similar to what people know and they're the easiest to learn. Uh, so in that, you kind of go plego forth and one, and then it's either three or seven, you kind of introduce because they're kind of weird, um, and four is also diatonic. So uh, three and seven kind of get into enharmonic mode, which would just require like another extra 15 minutes of talking about it. So we'll go from plego forth to first mode, and then what you have is, again, the first mode uh, brief. And just to remind you, uh, did anyone remember what the diatonic scales numbers are? Like uh, the intervals between Nipa, Vu, and all those? Oh, it must be like, must you be have them down here. 12, yeah, 8, and 12. 12, 6. Yeah. Oh, 12, 10. OK, that's right. Yeah, 12, 10, 8, 12, 12, 10, 8. And this is from knee to knee, to high knee. Uh, and then, so. Then, as we said before, we have pa, and then we have vu. And in Western music, this is 12, 12, 6. So because we're kind of cutting, mm -hmm. cutting pa and vu a little bit short, then that makes our vu flatter than Western music would think. Uh, and then uh, ga, and then vi, ke, zo, and then mi. Wait, how that You one? had too many 12s. Ni, pa, vu, ga. Oh, I had I three 12s. All right. All right. And, uh, and so that's, that's where this happens. So what we're going to do, instead of 12, 10, 8, we're going to go 10, 8, 12, 12, 10, 8, 12. Uh, because the first mode starts on pa, and that's its general basis note. And at least for the brief version of the first mode, it generally goes from pa and then goes to the, uh, there's no dot in Greek, and, uh, and then it goes back to pa. And, uh, and so what, this is kind of the general arc for brief, brief first mode. And so what you'll see is that at any of the beginnings, it always starts on pa. At any of the <coughs> endings, the full complete endings, it'll go to pa. And at any of the kind of uh, tentative endings where you could end, but you don't have to end, it'll go to pa. And at anything where it's some sort of imperfect sentence, imperfect clause, uh, it'll end on the. And then as we did talk, I think we talked about it last week, was that because there's kind of these two, um, two parts, this, uh, this separates it into two things that are called tetrachords. So you have two sets of four notes, pa, bu, ga, di, and then di, ke, zo, ni. Uh, so then this is our first tetrachord, just set of four notes. And this is our second tetrachord. Um, this would go um, up to high knee. And so this kind of determines where our isan would fit. And so what we saw was that we go from pa to the in pa as our melodic contour. And then this is what determines our isan. So if we're in between pa and the, our isan is going to be pa. If we're in between the and ni, our isan in general is going to be the. And so this, if you look through the music as you kind of check it out, these are kind of things to, to search for. Uh, the only other thing for first mode to, to know is that when you're going up, uh, as we talked about with Klegel 4, Zo is natural if you go past it, and Zo is flat when you come down. And then the same thing kind of on Vu. Because Vu, especially when you're ending a piece and when you're descending to it, Vu gets pulled down even further. So it's not a full Vu flat, but it's a good bit further down than it would be uh, normally. So say that again, going up, it's natural coming back down, it's flat. Yeah, so... Um, so if this ni pa 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 vu ga vi ke zo ni pa ni zo ke ke zo ni zo ke. So if I'm ke zo ni zo ke. You say something like if you just if you just sort of touch it, hmm? if you hit it, yeah, and then don't go above it. But yeah, that's, then, that's it's, flat. then it just be flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're just gonna hit it but not go past it, the law of attraction for notes just says zo will be flat. So And then with that, often I do hear it is The vu gets pulled down even further. Are those intervals the same for tone four that we did, just did pretty much? Uh, for plagal four, yep, all the intervals Wait. are the same. Okay. And it is for tone four as well. Uh, 
essentially uh, one so off roll. one Plago one, mo mostly Plago one, one not all of them, and then Plagal four Plago four. Uh, Plago one gets a little bit iffy. Uh, three is kind of there. It's got some iffiness, and then uh, Grave mode turn seven is a little more iffy as well. So, does that make sense? So we'll kind of we'll kind of go through this again as we go. Um, did I confuse you at all with any of that? I just know that it was so far above my head that I just I'll pick it up later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and we'll, we'll re re hit it again. So this hopefully it, it'll be it'll be a recurring theme. So uh, what we'll do we'll just start uh, with the Lord I've Cried first mode brief uh, from Saint Anthony's Monastery. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and so what what I did for you guys oh. is I. Uh, it starts with the Resurrectional Theotokian oh, because, this, this side, yeah, because it, uh, in order to make it fit with the long version uh, and to make all the pages work out right, then this one happens to be double-sided, but this is the last page of the previous section, and this is the first page of the, the new oh, section. Nice. So, so that way, when, when we're all done, you'll have a full set of things that you can just oh. put together in a book or whatever you so desire. So, um, and if you write on it, you'll have a book with writing in it. It's, uh, it's all good. Uh, it's yeah. So, uh, so what we'll, what we'll the first thing we'll see is what what note do we start on here for Lord I Have Cried? D. Well, what is, what is our base note that it's it says at the beginning? The yeah, it's pa. Note. And um, so that's just up at the top of the of the, the piece of music where it says Lord I Have Cried, and right underneath it says Ikos, and then it has our little uh, symbol in the middle, which tells us that we're in the diatonic scale. And we're, we'll be in first mode, which again we'll talk about them in the future. And then you have pa, and pa has a little uh, lollipop on the top of it. And if you go to your uh, scale chart, then you'll notice that for in the bottom left-hand uh, quadrant, you'll see that underneath pa it has the same lollipop little symbol. I don't know what the term. For that is, I'll just keep saying lollipop. Uh, but so because there's a the that symbol there, normally what everything in the bottom uh, left hand corner, and we'll use this today, uh, this tells you how to transfer between scales, and this again tells you that if you're in if you're transferring to the diatonic scale, if you see the lollipop, the note that you're sitting on will be pa. So because we're just starting the piece, it puts the lollipop above pa, just to tell you that this is pa, and the type of pa that we're dealing with is a diatonic pa. And it makes everything else the diatonic scale. So, uh, any questions there? And we'll get back to this scale chart in a second. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> if let's say ananes, that'll be our pa. And so, as you said, we start on the so one. We're doing two. Ni pa. Ni pa. Yep. So okay. One, two, one. Vi, vi, ga, vi, ke, zo, ke, vi, ga, vi, ga, vu, pa, vu, ga, vi, ga, vu, ga, vi, ga, vu, pa, ke, ke, vi, Difficulties was that an okay speed? Yeah, that's good for that. Um, and just to let you know, if uh, if you do happen to have questions, I have at least first mode brief and first mode slow and play go forth all recorded up on ByzantineChant.org with oh, all okay. the pause and vus. Right. Um, and then first mode brief, I have at least all the stakira for vespers recorded with me myself and I. Um, 
quite a trio. Yes, indeed. It's it's uh, it's quite quite nice if I do say so. No. Uh, so uh, the the one thing to notice here is uh, on Lord you have Pa as Nissan, and then everything there kind of uh, we have. We hit the. We kind of go up to kids, okay, but we don't. We don't really stick up in that that upper tetra chord, and we go back down to pa, and then we go on to uh, hearken unto me, the first one. We end on the, and then we go back down to pa, and then uh, on the second line at Lord I have cried. That's where we start to focus on the upper tetra chord, and there the eson changes. And that's where you have ke ke the the ke zonizo ke the. Then we go back down to the pa eson. Um. All right, uh, let's sing, let's sing Let My Prayer uh, with <coughs> the Nipavu and see how we do there. And we can always do them twice if people want to. Uh, I think that worked out pretty well, though. So, Anane Verabiapa Vikenizo Kedi Vigavu Gaga di vu ga ga di di pa di di ke zo ni zo ke di di ga ga vu ga di 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 ga ga Questions there? Well, the Oma Lung, how do you do all that? I mean, uh, so when you on the first, I, I the first line, that Oma Lung under it is it implies some sort of fluctuation of the, yep. the voice, but I don't know where. So it's a question you can ignore it if you want to. Um, what we'll do, at least what I what I've been doing. Um, so let my prayer be set forth as incense before thee. Because you go up afterwards. Yep. Yeah, so so that you just have the flutter. You have the flutter, but it has to be a very quick flutter. So, so we'll have to flutter. You can't do it, just do it straight. Yeah, because I mean, you can go. Let my prayer be set forth as incense before thee. And that's fine. Uh, if you so desire to do in, that's... Well, if you do it right, it's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes part of learning how to do it right is to do it wrong a lot of times. <laughs> um, just don't get stuck in the, the doing it wrong phase. Uh, so, uh, does that clarify? Yeah, does that just, help? No, just how, how you do it. And sometimes you might hear people go, uh, in, like do underneath. Da, 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 da. In dun 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 gavu uh gavu gavu di. I don't I don't think that's necessarily as accurate. That's just they don't know what to do, and so they just interpreted it as such. I could be mistaken, but I think the the more classical one is in yeah There's some uh some late night show that has that da 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 dum or I don't know. I so. Any, do you want to do it again on Nipavu, all those, or just go straight to the words? Let's go to the words. Okay, words. Okay, so back to Lord I have cried, and we'll just go straight through Lord I have cried, followed by Let My Prayer. <coughs> on on is one, two, one. Lord, I have cried unto thee, I can unto I can unto me, O Lord. Lord, I have cried unto thee. I can unto me, I tend to the voice of my supplication. When I cry unto thee, I 
beginning on the second line of Lord I've cried it says uh, it has again the omal on there the only thing I would I would say I uh, you the way that we did it was Lord I mm -hmm. that you could do Lord I da, 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 Lord I have cried unto thee that's my inclination like when I actually do it so it's like a double. Um, Lord, I... Yeah, you're adding a few notes around it. Okay. Uh, and the only other thing is <coughs> on let my prayer, uh, at the end of the first line, uh, set, be set forth as incense before thee. Incense before thee. I think I did that. I'm not sure if I confused anyone there. Um, no, it just sounded different than what we were doing. Yeah, it, <laughs> if you do incense before thee, that's fine. A lot of times with that that formula, be sends before the sends before. So just that little added ornamentation there. Um, but we'll see that. You don't have to do that. I'm just letting you know in case you heard me do something and it's like, wait a minute, did I read that wrong? So, uh, any questions before we keep going? Can we uh, try this with you doing the uh, Esau? Sure. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Just the whole thing. I just, want, I just don't want him to, like, I want him to do the E song instead of the melody. But you guys get to do melody and I get to practice my E song. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lord, I have cried unto thee, hearken unto me, hearken unto me. Second, second line of let my prayer, um, and I'll do something different with the Isan. Uh, second line, the lifting up. Just start at um, up of my hand. Start as an evening sacrifice. Uh, the middle of the line. The lifting up. Yeah, as an evening. The middle of the second line. Yeah. So as an evening sacrifice. Hearken unto me, O Lord. So there's a lot of times you will find people that go down to knee at the end of certain phrases. It's not written here at all, uh, mostly because this is trying to be very conservative in terms of ease. ease oh, yeah, for that. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people really, really uh, hold on to that, that lower knee, and they... Uh, Sometimes people think that there's too much moving Isan. Isan's like 
unchanging. It's uh-huh. not supposed to move. So why are you playing around with it and going do 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 do, and really changing a lot? So this is trying to be conservative, moving when it seems ne- like helpful to the yeah. melody, but not moving when it's unnecessary. But a knee here and there is nice. You know, it it adds more pull. It almost makes it a little more. Yeah, we're finishing. Uh-huh. Uh, and the only other thing, I think, um, the beginning, uh, instead of, um, Lord, I, Lord, I have cried unto thee. You went up higher than that. Okay. And then at the end, that my prayer, I I think the, the oh, Gorgon yeah. got misplaced to the second, to the Kandimata on Lord. incense. Let my prayer. Uh, yeah, let my prayer. On the first line on incense. The Gorgon oh. uh, right there got misplaced to the second the second note. So it done the Kantimata. So it was, Let my prayer be set forth as I- I- incense. Which is not what it is. I- incense is I- incense. Uh, that's the only thing, only two little issues. But very nice. Does that, does that make sense what I... So is that, what was that last one again? <coughs> I, on... This is really like... <clears throat> Here, let me let me draw. Yeah, would you? Yeah, let me just switch you. Um, okay, so mm, so is uh, what is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. And then move this guy maybe. Mm-hmm. And then so I. This is one half, right? One half of a beat? Yes, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this one is one half, right? Right. So, and this one's one. Right. So, I... Gaga Gaga As opposed to what, what you guys did during the thing was... Gavi, oh, I like... Ga-ga-di, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Gavi, So, um... So this is technically just one, right. one, one note. It just happens to have an omelon with a with a gorgon in the middle. So oh, okay. you, so I, you yeah. could just do this as do do incense. Okay. Yeah. So just one two one two. Where yeah, you guys I, I mean, one, the last two, two and yeah. one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. No, it does. Cool. I remember doing it now. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Brief Stakira. First mode, verse number one. <coughs> Stakira number one. Uh, so, we won't talk about the theology behind a lot of these ones. These are these are nice. Uh, as you'll notice, I think we mentioned with the Plago fourth ones, all the things with Vespers, at least in the beginning, they're always talking about evening prayers. And uh, and it's, it's interesting just to see how they talk about them and... and each tone, they all have a different characteristic. So this one, um, accept our evening prayers, O Holy Lord. Uh, and we'll start with bring my soul out of prison. Um, and we'll just sing it uh, as it is, you know, with the words. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may confess thy name. Okay, and then stick here number one with Nipavu. I... On the second line, we're going to stop because uh, we hit things that we don't know yet. Um, so we'll go to, through the first line, and then on re, we'll stop, and then I'll talk for <laughs> a, few, a few minutes. So we won't actually finish the word, and I'll keep you hanging. Uh, so uh, so we ended on V, so we're back on Pa, next step. Uh, oh, wait, on Pa. Uh, so, uh, Pa. Pavu, Pavu, Gavi, Gavu, Gavi, Pagavu, pa, pa, stop. Um, okay, so what do you see there? It's a, it's like a, I don't know what you would call that. It's a circle with a, with kind of a line attached to Saturn it. Saturn scene in it. Yeah, uh, so. Profile. If you go to your scale chart. Hard chromatic. Yes, it is hard chromatic. So if you go to your scale chart in the bottom left hand corner, we go to our chromatic family. And number two is hard chromatic, and you'll see that there's one uh, that's for pa and k, and there's one that's for the and pa. Uh, and that's essentially if you see one, uh, if you see either of them, 
uh, on a note, it means that that note transforms to either pa or k if it's the first uh, symbol, or uh, v or pa. And the reason why it's either one or two of those, um, why you can have like pa or k, is because they both have the same environment, pa, the regular pa, pa there kind of acts like k. Mm -hmm. They both act the same way. They have the same local environment in terms of intervals around them. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with v and pa. So now we have to talk about the hard chromatic scale for a brief moment. So, and how this scale switching works. So what we had was we had 12, 10, 8, 12, 12, 10, 8 for the diatonic scale. And so, at least for this one, it's 10, 8, 12, 12, 10, 8, 12. And in this one, as you notice, if you look at the, the numbers on your, on your chart, Instead of 10, 8, 12, 12, 10, 8, 12, it's 6, 20, 4, 12. 6, 20, 4. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so our 12 is the same. So that's, <laughs> we at least have a 12 there. Everything else is different. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this changes our whole thing. Uh, 6 is your regular half step, half step in Western music. This is your regular half step. 4. It's not exactly a half step. It's a little bit smaller than a half step, but it's close enough to a mm -hmm. half step for our purposes at the moment. So we'll say it's a half so step. So we have two half steps and a step and a half. Yeah, so we have two half, mm -hmm. yeah, half steps and a step and a half. So that's our pa. We go up a half step for vo, and then we go up a do. We go up one and a half, and then up another half step. Pa, vo, ga, ni, ga, vo, pa. I think it's a, when people hear that, that's what they, they think. Like oriental. Byzantine. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Byzantine to them, is, is the oriental uh, type, type sound. Um, so, very Middle Eastern, very Arabic, you know. Just slowly. And there's a uh, up Internal online, yeah. same on uh, byzantinechant.org, there's, it's, I forget where it is exactly, it's under one of the learn links, but there's a set on scales, and not all of them work, but at least the diatonic one works, and the oh, yeah. hard chromatic one works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I have it where, I'm working on it where I, it has my actual voice doing it, uh, but I, it's not finished, and I don't want to put it up there unfinished. So, I, we'll see how that goes. So that's the scale. Now the question is, how do we apply the scale? And so what we see is this is a uh, pa, and then we have bu, and then ga, and then vi. And so what happens is we hit pa in the diatonic scale, right. and then on pa we see that little symbol, which tells us that we switch to the hard chromatic scale, and that this note, which is called pa, mm -hmm. will now become vi in the hard chromatic scale. Right? So this whole thing shifts Wait, down. Say that again, say that again. What? So yeah, pa becomes the pa becomes the okay and I'll, th this this is where uh, I'll, I'll hopefully clarify this so pa uh, because it has the symbol on top it no longer acts like pa because this symbol tells you that it's the in the hard hard chromatic scale so then uh, what happens is that normally you might put the hard chromatic scale from pa and just replace it there but because it's not working like that we have to shift this down. So that twelve, this V is actually sitting where pa is. So what you would do uh, is you would put V here, and then it'd be ga, vu, pa, and then you have six, twenty, four, and so then you have pa, vu, ga, vu, pa, and then pa becomes V, ga, vu, pa, vu, ga, V. So it's essentially that we're just we're just fixing another scale to where it was before. Does that make sense with this shifting of scales? Is that no? no. I don't know how you. I mean, I, I don't know how you get from pa to v. Uh, 
Well, what, what tells you to go to D? I mean, what do you, I guess he would. I mean, but, maybe this is what you're saying. I, I guess I don't quite, quite follow that either. But mm-hmm. I mean, what you're saying is that the relationship now between pawn and the notes around are, are going to follow that. Right. Going to follow the relationship between. So I mean, it's not really becoming D. It's just that the relationship of pa to the notes around it now is the same mm-hmm. as the relationship to D as the notes around it in a hard chromatic scale. Mm-hmm. So instead of like going from pa to knee, yeah, and, and, and having a whole step, now it's only a half step to the note below it. Right. So it, originally we would go pa ni pa vu ga vu pa, but now it's pa ni pa ni zo ke zo ni pa. I mean, it's still pa, it's just that now it pa's behaving differently. Mm-hmm. And so ever since you got into the liquor, it yeah. hasn't been the same. <laughs> <laughs> so what what I what I like to term this is that we have a global scale, which is our ni pa vu ga di ke zo ni. So all this stays the same. So in the music, it, you'll always, it'll, pa will always be pa. Uh, what changes, though, is the symbol underneath it. So normally you see pa in the diatonic scale, and it has the little backwards p. Uh, now what you'll see is that this one switches and becomes pa with this little guy underneath it. Okay? And the reason for that is if you go to your scale chart, you see in the hard chromatic scale, uh, the second scale from the left, uh, for the, uh, the note the has that little sideways uh, symbol underneath it. Uh, so the global note is still pa, but it's acting like the. Uh, it's impersonating the. So uh, so this is where things get a little tricky, and, and what, what we have is we have sliding scales, and they kind of match up, and you kind of jump. It's almost like shoots and ladders. You jump, mm-hmm. and you hit another ladder on a different, on a, starting at a different point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Without that change there, it would be like, be, it was like, grant us the remission of sins. Yeah. But that's not what it sounds like anymore, because we just changed scales. So now it's mm-hmm. something like what? So, mm-hmm. I, so um, and grant us the remission of sins, mission of sins. And, kind of slide that. and so the and the way the way to sing the way that people sing this with the knees and paws, just to, to kind of push this put push this fact and the fact that when you're switching between scales it becomes difficult to sing it on you're singing the hard chromatic scale from the but you're still singing pa and knees and zos and it doesn't it doesn't click in so what they'll do is it'll go um pa ga vu pa pa di ga vu ga di because you switch into another scale uh, if you listen to the things that i put up online you'll hear me go Pa ga vu pa pa the hard grammatic ga vu ga the just to let you know that it's not it's not the of the original thing I didn't just make a that's mistake. That's more confusing, like because then we're having to like get our, wrap our heads around the idea that you're changing the name of the note almost. It it helps tremendously when you're actually when you're doing much more complicated music and you're like whoa how does this even work I don't understand how this is when you're singing it, mm-hmm. but once you actually sing it with the note names and you stop thinking about ni and pa of the diatonic scale and you actually switch to another scale. Then it starts to to clarify how how everything is related. Um, and before we answer any any more questions, since we're in the hard chromatic scale, but we're singing in a diatonic mode, we have to get back to the diatonic at some point. We can't stick there the entire time. So on pa, what you see is that pa has this symbol underneath it, which tells us that we're we're in we're still on pa in terms of the entire scale. We haven't. We're on the same note that we were before, uh, but we're, we have a different environment around it. We have the hard chromatic environment of the. But then on top of it, you see this, the lollipop again, right? Right after, grant us the remission of sins. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so there we have our, our little lollipop, which tells us if we go, this is our modulating, uh, our modulant, uh, which is, phthoras uh, is the, the Greek term for it. Uh, but so what we do is we modulate back to the diatonic scale, and whatever this note was, forget it, because now it's going to become pa of the diatonic scale. So all these little modulants, whatever they are, they tell you to kind of forget whatever you were, this is where you're going to be now. Oh, going back. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is just yeah, saying, diatonic. we were here. Turned it off now. We, then somehow we got to be this, t- this type of pa, and this is turning it off. Okay. That so, I understand. Okay. So one one turns on the so hard chromatic scale, but in a different region. So it turns it on, too. 
Well, it this this one turns diatonic back on. Oh. In the beginning, when you say remission, that that turns that's, that's hard chromatic on. on. That means you're going into the hard, hard chromatic. chromatic. Hard chromatic. From the the thora comes again to end as long as the diatonic is above the note. Well, so this this thing, th this is your note of the scale. Okay. This is your environment. Right. So th this, this has nothing to do with changing tell, scale. Oh, so the lollipop tells you to change. Right. Yeah. I wish I so, could think of another word for lollipop. Yeah, I, but I, I have to look into your homework for the. It's your homework for the. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sora, sora is the, the word. It means decay, by the way. Decay. Uh, okay, so we're decaying into. We're yeah. decaying into a, a yeah. chromatic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to write down all these all these terms because I don't know any of the. Greek but I don't know the lollipop. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the word is because normally it's just like this symbol means this. Mm -hmm. I I'll have to look and see if there's an actual term. I. So what? So what we we always have some sort of note, like we have some sort of note with something beneath it throughout it for our martyria, our witnesses throughout the music, our martyria, uh, the witnesses throughout the music to tell us what note we're on and what type of scale we're singing in. So that remains the same here. So we're still on pa. Now we're in a hard chromatic environment, and this whatever is above it will tell you how to change back, or how to change to a new new scale. Similar to what we saw last week with the Zigos, except now we're actually sing, uh, singing a, a real scale, and we have to shift. We didn't shift last week. So, is everyone slightly less confused? Is it, is it, does it kind of make sense? That yeah, that makes sense. We're shifting scales. Sense. Now it's on how do yeah, what, what I, and what I'd like to do eventually is kind of make a PowerPoint where, you know, you have shifting scales, and one shifts and kind of takes over, and you start putting them together, but... Uh, it's too much work at the moment. So, uh, so that this is at the moment how how we'll do it. So, so you want what was the question? How does it sound? Or well, yeah. Or how did, how do you actually? How would you? It? Well, I guess we'll go over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that's just where I uh, you go paga uh, and grant us the remission of sins goes paga vu pa pa di ga vu ga di. Pagadi ke di zo ke di ga di di ga di ke di ga vu di ga vu pa pa. So and now we now you we all will sing it at a slower yeah tempo. I think Lawrence Arabia. Oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. That's a. That that's perfectly acceptable. Right, Although remission of sins. <laughs> um, so uh, let's start from the beginning of stick here number one. Does that make sense? Kind of how to how to execute it and to switch to the. Does that make sense? So Just, when you're when you're counting it out with the, what's the word for that? The ni I mean, is there a word for paralegi? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, or sulfage. Right. <laughs> you're you're switching to the there when yep. you're that. Okay. Yep. And and this is not my own convention. Right, this, is, this, done, is, this is what's done. So I. Don't just wait. Nineteenth century Greece. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> uh, from the earliest times until now. Uh, so that's how we'll do it, and it'll. You'll see, a lot of these things they don't become evident right now, and it's it's a stumbling block for people that are learning, and it was a stumbling block for myself. But eventually, there there comes this aha moment where it's like, oh man, that's why I did it that way because it com becomes so much clearer why it's necessary to switch. Uh, and I've had people, some of our chanters up in Pittsburgh, where they they did vespers by themselves, a bunch of us that knew knew things weren't there, and they finally said, now we know why you taught us Byzantine notation because they kind of knew Western notation, but they didn't really, they could do it if I was there or if one of us that could sight read it. And then now they did it with Byzantine, and they were like, "This makes so much more sense, and it's so much easier." Now I understand why, why you forced us to do certain things. <laughs> so I'm not forcing; you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but I, I strongly encourage you to do what I do. No. <laughs> or you never stand at the chance to stand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, <laughs> thankfully, we won't be singing pause and knees at the at the chanter stand. <laughs> so, stick here, number one. Accept our evening prayers from Pa. Ananes, that's pa, one, two, one. Pa, vu, pa, vu, ga, di, ga, vu, ga, di. Pa, ga, vu, pa, pa, di, ga, vu, ga, di.
back to pa. Pa gadi ke di zor ke di gadi di gadi ke di gavu di gavu pa pa. All right, how'd that go? Does that make sense? <clears throat> <laughs> Shall we do it again with Pa and Boo? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. A little, a little bit faster. One, two, one. Pa, Boo, Pa, Boo, Da, Di, Da, Boo, Da, Di. Pa, Da, Boo, Pa, Pa, Di. Now, the one place where this becomes amazingly evident with all the switching is if you go to the the glory both now for dormition. We don't have it. I'm just speaking. Um, the glory both now for dormition. It's it's a it's a glory that's in all the eight tones, and so or for vespers the glory both now is in all the eight tones, and so you're you're singing first mode starting on ke, but it's acting like pa, and then you switch to uh, where pa becomes pa for the uh, for plagal first, and then the uh, like it it just keeps switching back and forth between all sorts of modes, and you're singing ke, but it's actually sounding like a whole different note, and it makes no sense whatsoever when you're looking at these little markers in the midst of the music you see something and you're it's like zo but it's hard chromatic I mean, like the I mean like one when you say it switches back and it does all all eight tones in one one one, one glory. glory yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, so yeah i never four that's so, strange isn't it well be, uh, because the i think the theological reason is that you're um what happens is that the the thematic qual the thematic uh material of the the glory is going between all sorts of moods and so what you, first what you have is you have all the apostles coming from far off to come to the, the falling asleep of the mother of God. So not only is the mother of God worthy of all eight tones, like she gives, she's the only one that's given the glory of having all eight tones in her, her doxastikon, her glory, her hymn of glory. But then you also have all these apostles coming from all different parts of the world. So that's one aspect where you have all these different tones representing the apostles coming from all over the place. But also you have the uh, the apostles coming from afar, which starts in, in tone one, and then it said they they um, came with reverence and, and great majesty in a procession, which is plagal of the first, which is kind of what Christ is risen as well, giving you a lot of majesty, kind of this this weightiness. Huh. Um, but then then it says that they're uh, if they're amazed and they're escorted with the the heavenly hosts on high, which is uh, plagal two tone six, which is your very or or oriental, very mystical type thing. And always is with the bodiless host, any angel type thing, it's always tone six. Um, and at any time that they're amazed, it's always tone six. Uh, so that's, it says that the, the angels were amazed that they didn't know what was going on. Then the fact that the it was this confusion, then you go into tone two. Um, so it just keeps going through with the thematic material, just going back and forth. Uh, and there, we, we could go through the entire thing, but not right now. But it, it so there's a purpose for each one. It's just... Um, Hmm. It's the hardest. It's one of the hardest luxastika of the year, because you really have to be able to switch. Okay, I'm switching to this tone. I'm yeah, switching to I, this that's tone. That's hard to do. In the span of you know two lines, you then switch to another one. It, two lines, or you switch to another one. You've done it. They go back. To, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to go to do that too. Um, and uh, so it, when you hear it done. So that's the luxastika for the dormition. dormition. Yeah, the vesperal luxastika. Um, and if you want to hear a recording in English, there's one by the choir that I was a part of. I just put it up maybe two weeks ago. Oh, where? Uh, up on YouTube. Uh, I mean, if I, what do I search for? I, if you go to byzantinechant.org oh, right, so on the homepage, okay. there's a link to our YouTube page. Okay. I didn't want to put them all up on our, on our, yeah, yeah, yeah. on our website because I didn't want to clutter things. Okay. Don't um, that. but there's a whole thing. I've never things. heard it. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it, you when you hear something that like went all through all my time. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a. 
And when you hear it done, it makes sense. When I first was reading it, I was like, what does this even do? I was like, this makes no sense to me. And then that's where my theoretical knowledge got combined with my friend's practical knowledge. I have all the theory background, and he has all the practical experience of actually chanting. And he was like, no, 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 that's not how you do it. And then he chanted it, and then I was like, oh, oh, yeah, that's not what I was doing at all. Hmm. So it makes a lot more sense. So it, it does, uh, it gets complicated at times, but then that's where actually switching note names helps. Okay. Do you, do you have a website geared to this course? I mean, I mean, the broadcast. Byzantine Chant Org. And that is it? Mm -hmm. and, that, and you can find information about each of the tones? And... Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff on Kind of. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, there's... Yeah, every time we come, come to dead links are... Wait, yeah, every so often. Links that aren't active, I guess. It's yeah, and really dead is one word. They're probably Byzantine never Byzantine Chant, yeah. And, and okay. it's, it's all... It's all done out of like our the group in, in Pittsburgh where I was a part of, but I'm the webmaster and I'm the one that puts up everything. And so until we actually start switching things, I, I'm still the one that, that kind of puts up most of the material. So it's all a matter of how I have time and what I think is most important to put up there. Because I've had people that, that have given me um, lists. Like I had one, I think it was from Romania, some, some guy who was emailing me and said, oh, it'd be great if you had this and this and this. And I, I was happy because I, I, I asked him for suggestions. Um, but I couldn't guarantee that I would put them up in any, any a lot of time, yeah, reasonable yeah. amount of time. It's like, those are great ideas, and thank you, because I, I would never think of exactly what people want, want up there. Um, so if you think of anything, uh, please tell me. I have no guarantees that I will put it up there. Add it to the list. Also. Yeah, I'll add it to, to the list. Uh, but it, a, a lot of material is up there. Uh, hopefully not scattered. We're, we're going to reorganize, but we'll see how quickly a reorg goes. So, verse number two, Stakira number two. Uh, the righteous shall wait patiently for me. Oh, are we going to do the words? We didn't do the words yet, have we? Oh, oh, we didn't. No, we didn't. No. Okay, back to Stakira number one. Uh, we'll start with bring my soul out of prison. Anane. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may confess thy name. Accept our evening prayers, O Holy Lord, and grant us the remission of sins. For Thou alone art He who hath shown forth the resurrection unto the world. Is that good? And no, do it again? It wasn't good. Okay. I, I don't know why I got kerfuffled. <laughs> Where, where'd you get All over the place. I, was kind of, I don't know if I'm tired or just tired. Let, let, us, let us do it again. Yeah, let us do it again. <laughs> let us. Uh, I know so. I got thrown off because you, it seemed like you were going really quickly through the worst one, and from that point on, I just oh, I, I was like a beat or two behind. It. So what, what we're doing, at least, we discussed this before, is that at the top, uh, the top right of the verse, you have um, a Kai. Like uh, right across from verse number one, okay. um, you have a, a kai. Yeah, all the Greek words. Then you have a kai yeah, with, the little, with the little squiggles above it. Uh, the digorgon. Digorgon. Yep. Yeah. And um, okay. so that one essentially what the kai means is chronos, which is just time, mm -hmm. and uh, at least worldly time. Uh, I and then the the squiggles above it, uh, the digorgon, tells you that you're going to be fast, uh, really fast. Okay. Okay. So we start kind of at a very talking pace, almost bring my soul out of prison. And then right after that, you see a little guy which says, not as fast. Okay. <laughs> which is, the, you go from the oh. Vigorgon to oh. Gorgon, which tells you, that I may confess thy name. Which in practice would probably be a little faster, um, a little faster than walking tempo. Uh, but for our purposes, we'll keep it on the slower side. Um, so that's, that's where you switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see that in, we were talking, I think, in Trubic hymns where mm -hmm. not only do you have an uh, a Gorgon, but then you have the Argon, which points backwards, so then it's a little mm -hmm. slower. Sometimes you just have the Argon by itself, which is even slower. Sometimes you have the the uh, the three Emi Argon, which is even slower, um, and the D Argon, which is for even slower still. <laughs> so, uh, but a lot of those things end up, like, if you really want to stretch it out to take up time, mm -hmm. I, and or if you're singing something in an all-night vigil where you have to take up eleven <laughs> or thirteen hours, you know, so, so that's where you know it'd be Lord, oh, like 
that you're still on Lord and you're, <laughs> it, yeah. you can take, I think you take about, I think it was 20 minutes on the first Lord of Pride. <laughs> oh my God. So you, you can, and then you take 20 minutes on the second, and then my prayer. And then you do the long uh, Psalm verses right after that, which take another 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And before all of this, you've done uh, you've done the last ten verses of the the first Psalm of Vespers, the Pro Emil Psalm. Uh, uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, o Lord my God, you are very great. You do the final ten ten verses of that, and that can take forty minutes. Mm-hmm. So, and you you haven't even begun, you know, mm-hmm. most of the, the you haven't even begun the hymns of the day, and you've already taken up over an hour to just begin Vespers. So it's very exciting when you do that, but. Um, takes it out of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why there's antiphonal choirs, because then right. you get a break. Rest, yeah. Verse number one, uh, starting mm-hmm. rapidly. Uh, mm-hmm. Bring my soul out of prison that I may confess thy name. Accept our evening prayers, O Holy Lord. And grant us the remission of sins. For thou alone art he who hath shown forth the resurrection unto the world. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, do it again or go move on? Okay, move on. Verse number two, and I think this is where we'll stop for the evening at verse number two and secure number two. We'll get through no this. No hard chromatics. No hard chromatics in this one. So this this we can, yeah, we, we, can, we, can, <laughs> we can probably breeze through this one uh, a little more quickly than the last one. So um, we'll start with verse number two, just on the words, and then secure number two, we'll sing with Nipa Vu. So that'll be your pa. The righteous shall wait patiently for me. Until thou shalt reward me. And now the nipa. Pa. Pa. Yep. Me is assumed that's a D, so right. that, that's why we're starting with. That's why I dropped yep. it. Yeah, and, and what. Because otherwise you would be dropping three, you think that it's. Exactly. I'm confused. I was confused now. I know that, that this is just continuation. And, and what you'll see uh, at the end of the line is normally whatever note uh, the, oh, the next I line see. is referencing. Right, and so this one it says the, which happens to be what right reward inside, me. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. Okay. And so in in bring my soul out of prison, there was a the at the end of the line, but it was so close there wasn't very much room for the end of the line, so it's it's just there. Um, sometimes it won't say the; it'll say pa. Uh, in all of Saint Anthony's music, they're pretty consistent, so they'll always say the whatever note it ends on. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they don't do that. Um, it depends on the books that you're reading from. Oh, pa! Then assuming that you're starting with pa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that would that would tell you what you're starting from. Uh, so that's right. So then we start on pa pa vu ga di ga vu ga ga di 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 ga ga vu ga ke di ni. Cool. Any questions there? There was a little bit, I think, um, just at the beginning of the second line, and give glory. The The rest of it, I think, was... Any Anyone else have... Were there any other little issues in there, I think? I think that was okay. Okay. Verse number two, stick here number two with the words. The righteous shall wait patiently for me. Until thou shalt reward me, and circles I know ye peoples, 
and encompass her, and give glory therein to him that is arisen from the dead. For he is our God who hath delivered us from our iniquities. Cool. So now, um, if people want to read all the way straight through on the word, we can. Otherwise, uh, I'm fine with being done. Okay. So, cool. Actually, can we do it one more time with you doing the you song again? Oh, uh, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. from what? Verse number two, stick here number two. Or uh, what do you? Just the stick Okay, stick here number two. Come on, encircle Zion, O ye peoples, and encompass her, and give glory therein to Him that is our. Our God, who hath delivered us from our iniquities. Very nice. Cool. Um, and I think that's where we'll we'll stop. All right.